I've always thought that we enjoy quite the intimate friendship. <laughs> it seems your great battle sharpened not only your combat skills, but your wit as well. <sighs> A night after my own heart. To bask in the presence of Mondstadt's new big hero is quite the morale boost. And that's coming from a knight. Sweet-talking, sugar-coated Captain Kaya. <laughs> Nonsense. I speak from the heart. Just looking for a quiet spot to collect my thoughts. While all the other knights are working hard to clean up after the battle? Thinking can be an arduous task, you know. Believe me, I'd much rather be taking out the trash. So what you thinking about then? The Abyss Order. A dragon wreaks havoc in Mondstadt, and the acting Grand Master leaves the city to combat the threat. Strategically, that's the perfect moment for the Abyss Order to make their move. If you were the Abyss Order, would you squander this golden opportunity by sending in nothing more? To get to the bottom of it, I decided to wait. So I waited and watched for their next move. Then came the day you made all hell break loose in Storm Terror's lair, just as the hilly churl's cries sounded from the city gates. That same day, I saw shadowy figures lurking in the city itself. Inside the city? Well, all the other knights were outside, fighting the enemy. As you can imagine, that left the inside of the city completely unguarded. Except for me, of course. And so I approached the Abyss Order infiltrators for a bit of... Mm, let's call it fraternizing. Through various means, I managed to gather some rather interesting intel. The situation is this. The Abyss Order. They are united under a single leader. The Abyss Order has a leader? Yes. And it was this very leader who devised the plot to turn Dvalin into a weapon of war. What exactly did you have to do to find this out? <laughs> Let's just say I'm blessed with certain linguistic powers. There's more. The Abyss Order has a name for this leader. Now, I'm sorry to cut this intelligence briefing short, but I do believe I spy Amber heading this way. I think she's still angry with me for my absence from the defense effort during the attack. I'd better slip away before she notices me. One minute I see Kaya, the next he slipped away. Clear sign of a guilty conscience. Are you sure? Because that sounds like exactly what he'd say to talk himself out of trouble. <sighs> but let's forget about him. I worked super hard today, and my tummy's rumbling. Let's order. Hi, Sarah. One sticky honey roast, please. Today's recommendation is the steak. So, now the storm terror threat is behind us. What are your plans for the next step? Paimon thinks it's time to leave Monsta and keep looking through the Seven Nations until we find clues about her brother. Huh, really? Oh, well, I guess this is goodbye for now. Hey, don't feel down. You'll always be a friend of the Knights of Avonius and our honorary knight. Wherever you may go, and wherever the wind may blow. That's the spirit. Remember, Mondstadt will always welcome you. All right, now let's eat before it gets cold. Mmm, that was good. Note to Paimon, Amber's recommendations are worth the wait. Of course. Well, I don't trust myself in the kitchen. You could always trust me with the menu. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. Jean's waiting for you at the cathedral. It's something to do with the Holy Lair de Himmel. You'd better head there now. There will definitely be something to try.
You're also here for Mondstadt's home, right? Anything the knights can do for you. This is Barbara, the deaconess of the church. She is here to retrieve the holy liar de Hamel. May the animal Archon protect you. I'm not really in a position to speak compared to our acting Grand Master, but I still want to thank you all on behalf of all of Mondstadt for your assistance. Fortunately, everything was resolved peacefully. I can't imagine how an all-out war between the military and the dragon would have ended. Now the Fatui have no choice but to keep their mouths shut. They must be annoyed that things didn't turn out as planned for them. This time, they even lost their best excuse to pressure the Knights of Favonius. Diplomatically speaking, they gained nothing, and on the contrary, simply proved just how vexatious they can be. Sounds like quite the story. So, did you bring the Holy Liar with you? We cannot ask you to keep defending the Liar forever. The Seneschal has been pressing me for a while now. We, uh, did bring it with us. Um, it's just... It's a little... Oh, don't worry. I'm not here to collect rent. The church has always received special funding. should get going. That trick I used to repair the Holy Liar. <laughs> I mean, the magic I used isn't going to hold forever, you know. What? <gasps>
at last, Mondstadt's rodent ruler in the flesh. <laughs> Scurrying through the streets looking for leftovers? Mondstadt calls this a god? Resident rodent beats invasive vermin. <laughs> Don't you dare speak back to me, insolent bard. Absentee Archon of Mondstadt. How impotent you've become. That smirk you wear looks out of place. Did you steal it from your master's face? <laughs> Should have held your tongue. This is a gnosis. Wouldn't be caught dead wearing this ugly thing in public. Beauty is a waste when the beholder has no taste. Venti! <laughs> well, we have what we came here for. Come, before our dear Favonian friends arrive. Leave nothing for them to find. Exactly. I found you lying unconscious outside the cathedral and used my elemental powers to heal you. That bard awakened first, but strangely, my healing powers had almost no effect on him. This is the first time I've encountered such a patient. But he just said, it's completely normal, and then got up and left the cathedral. He left? Already? Where'd he go? The symbol of Mondstadt's hero. That's what he said. I wanted to stop him, but Jean, uh, I, I mean, Master Jean, said to let- Paimon remembers Venti healing under that tree before. It's probably due to the connection between Windrise and the animal Archon. Master Jean has figured it out as well, but we can't tell Barbara. <laughs> The wind amongst the branches is good. I love the way it smells. <laughs> I said the exact same thing last time. <sighs> Why do I only say these things when I'm down on my luck? Ah, uh, so you noticed. <sighs> this isn't something I'm meant to discuss with ordinary people. But I suppose I can let you in on the secret. As you know, visions are external magical foci that only a small minority of people possess. They use these visions to channel elemental power. In truth, every wielder of a vision is one who can attain godhood and ascend to Celestia. We call such people Allogenes. Allogenes? Paimon's never heard of them before. <laughs> That's because this is a secret that only Archons are privy to. We don't need primitive tools like visions. Instead, each Archon has an internal magical focus that resonates directly with Celestia itself, known as a Gnosis. <laughs> 
It's just a glowing glass ball I carry around to avoid suspicion. So who was that nasty woman who sent Paimon flying and stole your gnosis? Her name is Signora, number eight of the Harbingers. She and the rest of the Harbingers have been given godlike executive authority by the Tsaritsa of Snejnaya, and with it, strength surpassing that of other mortals. The Tsaritsa of Snezhnaya? Isn't that... Indeed. She is one of the seven. The Tsaritsa who reigns from her winter palace, and the one person that the Fatui Harbingers all answer to. The seven don't always get along well, but still... I never thought that she would plot to steal another Archon's Gnosis. Uh, how should I put this? Five hundred years ago, I knew her well, but I can't say the same is true now. You see, a certain catastrophe happened five hundred years ago, and after that, she cut off all ties with me. But we can save discussion of the Cryo Archon and the Fatui for another day. If you seek the rest of the Seven, many difficulties lie ahead of you still. You should head for Mondstadt's neighboring nation of Liyue. The Geo-Archon who reigns there, unlike me, administrates his entire region personally. He only descends once every year to give his divine predictions, which set the direction for Liyue for the rest of that year. Even so, it sounds like he works much harder than a certain someone, hmm? <laughs> In any case, this year's rite of dissension is soon to begin. If you miss it, you'll just have to wait another year. What? Why didn't you tell us before? Well, then bye! We're going! One moment, Windborn Outlander. Yep. Traveler, as you set off on your journey once again, you must remember that the journey itself has meaning. The birds of Tevat, the songs in the cities, the Tsaritsa, her Fatui and the monsters, they are all part of your journey. The destination is not everything. So before you reach the end, keep your eyes open. Use the chance to take in the world around you. Great. So that's that for the Animal Archon's admonishments. Back to Venti time. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. That Fatui lady didn't hang around, did she? She just grabbed your gnosis and left? She wanted to avoid any eyewitnesses from the Knights of Favonius. The slightest slip up here would have destroyed the Fatui's diplomatic relations with the Knights. So they're just gonna keep acting like Mondstadt's allies as if nothing happened? <sighs> if only the Seven Nations had banded together against the Abyss Order in the first place. The Fatui possess the strongest military among the Seven Nations, yet they've used it to steal the Holy Liar, covet the power of gods, and use Dvalin as a bargaining chip against the Knights. Speaking of the Liar, didn't Diluc say something like this before? He said that the Fatui could only run amok across the Seven Nations and threaten the Knights because of the Harbingers. Yes. As I said earlier, the Cryo Archon has given them authority and strength beyond that of other mortals. The Tsaritsa... <sighs> I haven't seen her in 500 years. What is she thinking? What's her plan? <sighs> Whatever the answer is, I have a feeling it's only going to make your search for the Seven all the more difficult. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. Well then, best be off to Liyue. If the dissension ritual you failed to tally, then another year you must dally.
So, you've got a taste for adventure too, huh? I must say, the patrons have been in a bit of a buzz lately. Though the topic on everyone's lips is more of an urban legend than actual news. Even minding my own business, I still end up hearing all about it. Uh-oh. It's not one of those scary urban legends, is it? If so, Paima needs to take a deep breath first. <laughs> it's not a particularly scary story, no. At least, not for most people. It's the tale of... The Dark Knight Hero. Huh? Did the bartender just say something? You weren't even listening. Anyway, the Dark Knight Hero. It is said that he appears in the middle of the night to fight evil and uphold justice. But to be honest, I don't have much interest in such rumors. Unless, of course, he can help take care of the more belligerent patrons after they've had a few too many. <laughs> I would happily take that as proof of his existence. I'm told that there have been a handful of sightings. But in the depths of night, no one can get a good look at him. <laughs> Perhaps that's why he only appears at night. Nevertheless, the sightings confirm that the Dark Knight hero... It's more than just a groundless rumor. <laughs> anyway, that's more or less everything I know. If you want to know more, ask around in the plaza. Oh, I need to serve some customers. Dark Knight Hero. Seems like your standard cookie-cutter urban legend. But just a little darker. Wonder who it could be? Once you're ready, let's head out to the plaza and ask around! You want to find out about the Dark Knight hero? Look no further. It's me! I am the Dark Knight hero. <laughs> You're right, I'm not. I... <laughs> Jokes aside, I do think that the Dark Knight hero and I have one thing in common. What's that? It's the way he sticks to his principles. Coming out here, night after night, fighting for justice, keeping Mondstadt safe. Wow, so you're a nocturnal vigilante too? <laughs> no. I just mean he must be seriously rich. Why is that? People only start worrying about spiritual fulfillment once they have enough material wealth. It's the same in every hero story, isn't it? No, it's nothing like that. I just have too much time on my hands these days. Same difference. You are the boss of the cat's tail, after all. Why don't you ask the guards at the city gate? They do night shifts all the time. They must know something.
Come take a look. You want to know about him? In fact, I'm one of the few who has seen him with my own two eyes. Great! This is the guy we need to talk to! So, just who is the Dark Knight hero? Whoa! Slow, slow down. Let me start from the beginning. Well, I was patrolling one night when suddenly I heard something. I rushed over to check it out. I saw a gang of suspicious looking fellows who looked like they were up to no good. So I quickly hid. Hid? You're supposed to be a guard! That was when he appeared. He was dressed in black from head to toe, perfectly hidden in the night. The way he crept up on those bad guys must have felt like a living nightmare. Wow! Guess what I did next? I wasn't the bad guy, why would I need to run away? Still, I did leave the scene. I didn't want to be a nuisance to the Dark Knight hero. So instead, I headed to the Knights of Favonius' residence. Correct. I thought surely someone with such a strong sense of justice and who voluntarily protects Mondstadt is exactly the kind of person you'd find in the Knights of Favonius. <sighs> but it seems I was wrong. I checked everywhere, and there were no signs of anyone having left the building. So you're saying whoever it is can't be from the Knights of Avonius after all? Yes. But I just can't understand. Why would someone like that not want to join the Knights? I'm sure they would warmly welcome someone of his abilities. So the point you're trying to make is... You don't know who the Dark Knight hero is either? Hey, don't be like that. At least by talking to me, you've ruled out a few more people. Anyway, try asking at the flower shop. I heard a girl there's been talking about the time you rescued her. Can I get him out of my mind? Uh, hello? We'd like to ask you about the Dark Knight hero. My hero? Oh, sorry. Just hearing his name gets me lost in thought. Hang on, how did you know who I was talking about? Is it that obvious? Oh no, what am I going to do? If Master D. Luke ever finds out... Huh? What's Dilu got to do with this? Uh, well, I guess I might as well spill the beans then. I used to think Dilu was the one for me. But ever since the time I was rescued by the Dark Knight hero, I... I just don't know anymore. Wowee! You saw the Dark Knight hero? For real? What's he like? It all happened so fast. I was so scared. All I remember is seeing a flash of fire. But I felt safe. I only... Who knows? Now that you mention it, a pyrovision does seem like a good explanation. It lit up the whole area in an instant. I remember that very well. Okay, then. Well, thanks for the intel, Donna. See you around. So, based on what we know so far, all we need to do is find a wealthy, vision-wielding vigilante who's not one of the knights. Hmm. Nope, still no idea. But we already asked so many people. Guess we gotta see for ourselves. Let's take a look around the city at nighttime. If we're lucky, we just might bump into him. Wow, only at Quinn's fruit. <laughs> 
It's getting dark. Let's stick around, Monster. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll meet the Dark Knight hero. After managing to steer clear of the guard's patrol route, I never anticipated I'd run into you instead. Dark Knight Hero? Sounds awfully derivative to me. Please tell me you didn't come up with that. How is this the first you've heard of the name? Every man and his dog in Mondstadt is yapping about the Dark Knight Hero. I do not concern myself with idle chatter. Though, I suppose I may take the idleness of others as a sign that peace prevails. Huzzah! The great mystery of the Dark Knight Hero of Mondstadt! We solved it! Now then, Mr. Dark Knight Hero! Please, stop calling me that. Seriously, it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Not surprised! It's the stupidest superhero named Paimon's ever heard! You should come up with something more original! Like, um, Captain Pie. Pie? Captain Pyro! Tell us, Captain Pyro, what happened here today? It was the Abyss Order. Them again? I don't know what the devil they're plotting this time. It seems they're performing some initial reconnaissance. Considering that I've proven myself to be one step ahead of them on countless occasions, their persistence is... unusual. I assume so. Unless you're aware of any other... Dark Knight heroes around these parts. The Knights are, for the most part... An utterly incompetent bunch. I cannot trust them to take this matter over. <sighs> That's not my point. I'm not doing this to impress anyone. Well, I hope this conversation has been of service to you. Because I would like to ask for a favor in return. Oh? What is it, Master Diluc? Your wish is our command! You must keep my identity a secret. Above all, it is crucial that you do not let the Knights of Favonius know I am connected to any of this. <gasps> What's that sound? Yikes! Have the Abyss Order sent backup already? 
They appear to just be small timers. You should have no trouble dealing with them. I cannot afford delays on account of a few lackeys. I shall have to let you take care of them. Remember, don't tell a soul. Hey, you're just gonna leave us like this? Right. Yeah. Greetings. I thought I heard something, so I came to check it out. Did you see anything out of the ordinary? Nope. Nah, -uh. Not here. Nothing. Silch! Unless you're looking for the Dark Knight hero, in which case... The Dark Knight hero? You saw him? Oh! Uh... The Dark Knight hero is... Uh... Her! You! The hero who safeguards Mondstadt from the shadows. On behalf of the Knights of Favonius, I thank you for your service to this city. Uh, it's nothing. Really, you're too kind. W wait a second. Aren't you the traveler that just arrived in the city? Rumors were circulating about the Dark Knight hero long before you ever arrived here. Oh. Uh. Why would you lie to me about that? Hmm. Never mind. You don't seem like bad folks. But I do hope you will visit the Knights of Favonius soon, where we can discuss the Dark Knight hero situation in more detail. You know, some things are best not discussed in public. <sighs> Duty calls. I must be going. Stay safe, traveler. Seems like Huffman has something he really wants to say to you about the Dark Knight hero. Better head over to the Knights of Avonius and see if you can find him. It's you two. Thank you for coming. So, the Dark Knight hero, do you have anything else you're able to share with me? Ah, yes, of course I should fill you in first. Apologies for my appalling lapse of etiquette. The situation is... Mm, here, take a look at this. Jeez, what horrible handwriting. Hmm... Let me take a closer look. Huh? Some parts of this seem to be complete gibberish. Hmm, <sighs> indeed. Although this is written in the common tongue, it appears that a cipher has been used in many places. Nevertheless, one can grasp the general message from the non-ciphered portions alone. This is a war declaration from the Abyss Order to the Dark Knight Hero. Does that mean... The bad guys want the Dark Knight hero to go away forever and ever? Something like that. Thus, we are hoping to contact him as soon as possible so that we can attempt to coordinate a response. After all, this matter no longer concerns merely the Dark Knight hero himself. It impacts the entire city of Mondstadt. If you find out anything at all, come and find me. Declaration sent by the Abyss Order. Oh, this is not good news at all for Master Diluc. Quick! We should go tell him right away!
You're in for a little shock. Blitz. Just now, we were at the Knights of Avonius, and... and... I take it you're about to inform me of the War Declaration from the Abyss Order. I'm aware of it. Though I appreciate you for taking the trouble to come all this way. What? The Dawn Winery's intelligence network extends beyond commercial matters. Great! So, what's the plan, Master Diluc? I'm open to suggestions. No. That would be playing right into the hands of the Abyss Order. They know full well that we don't exactly see eye to eye. They're using this as a means to force me into making an appearance. If my identity were exposed, all my future activities would be subject to some degree of interference from the Knights. After all, no powerful organization wishes to be outdone by someone from the outside. The Abyss Order has really dealt you a tough hand this time. What a sneaky little bunch those guys are. There is a way. But for it to work, I need some more information. Specifically, I need to decipher the obscured portions of the Abyss Order's war declaration. Obscured portions? You mean the bits Paimon can't read? It must be a cipher only understood by members of the Abyss Order. ...used to spread messages within the organization. It's not simply a war declaration... ...but also a notification to their own. When you take a stand that makes you a hero to one party... ...you also become a villain to the other. 
And since I've been the Abyss Order's enemy for so long, they've made me the target around which they can rally their troops and unite their strengths. Wow! Seems like it takes a lot of brains to be a superhero, huh? I understand my enemy well, is all. As the saying goes, heroes and villains are two sides of the same coin. So what are we gonna do about the intel that's written in gibberish, then? How do we... un... gibberish... fi... it? Simple. When you don't understand something, you ask. I've already tracked down one of their strongholds. If you're interested, feel free to come along. <laughs>